Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zimbio. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at what's new in Zim 10.4.0. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com. We've been stacking up some new things in Zim 10. Now you can click this logo Zim 10 or if you get down here to the bottom you can press the 10 either way. And that initially had our, our new things as we launched Zim 10, the physics, uh, this accordion menu and bringing in SVG to blobs. But we've since added these examples here and they've been coming along in Zim 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, etc. So why don't we take a quick summary of them. Uh, hit test path. So we can now hit test on a path. Oh, there we go. And uh, reset that. And there's the hit test. So that's one thing. We can traverse a path. This is a new one. So this is a, a, a blob, the outline of a blob, and as we press, we're traversing the path, as in going from one, we're animating along the path, but we're animating from one point to the next. So that's that one, and we'll take a look at the code that does that. Retina is new, and we've done bubbling on retina. Arcs are new, so now circles can make arcs list check. So a checkbox is in, in lists and now we're reading the fact that this list has those things checked and a midnight snack. How about a midnight snack as well? So that's new and we'll take a look at the code for that. Tile flips. Uh, the tiles can be aligned to the right hand side and not just the left. So this is like uh, helps with right to left text and you can check that out if that applies to you strokes so now the strokes are I can't remember if we did a bubbling on this I think we might have but there are different types of bevel uh, bevels and strokes and the strokes also don't have to scale up so we've scaled up the squiggle and we've kept the strokes the same same stroke all right so check those out Zimon very very cool this allows you to save Zim objects, or actually any object, and then recreate them after. So it saves it out like JSON, except these objects are more than strings, numbers, arrays, and object literals there. Uh, any objects can be recreated. So that's pretty cool, including particle emitters are being recreated, etc. So that's Zimon, and there's a bubbling on that. Shape tweens, boingada, boingada, boingada. So I'm sure we did a bubbling on that the isometric board where we can say choose colors and move around on a board etc and there's a maze example for that as well <laughs> sorry for the mess here but we've added zim style style capital style for all uh, controls or most controls anyway controls that make sense so you these these things are now styled as well and to here, do, 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 do. spin in physics. There's a new spin command, so I'm pressing that, and it's it's like it's like force is a uh, force can be applied in a ticker, or you can use impulse. An impulse shoots right away. Well, you've got a torque, and the torque is like the force where you can apply it bit by bit but now we've added a spin which is like an impulse for spin so that's there in the physics and then three little mini sites here uh, announcing things like adobe shim to help work with animate model view controller so a way to do model view controller and the fact that we're on Node Package Manager. So you can grab Zim that way and then browserify it. So as we continue on in 10, we, we'll add things here and you, you can come take a look at that. So once again, to find that, you can press on the 10 logo and it will take you in. Or you can 
press on 10 here. We've also been updating the examples. So this is what's bubbling, the examples with uh, new code pen examples here. So these these are all new, this top row, just, uh, just today we've added those. So here's a 3D planet, for instance, in in Zim, but it's using 3JS. And we can press on this, and it will take us to highlight where those things are. So this is a Zim interface with 3JS. So that's cool. Uh, hit the greetings, and you'll see a greetings from us. And if you're on CodePen, give it some love. That would be nice. Uh, little hearts. It's easy to do that little heart right there. Press that. <laughs> And an anti-gravity physics one showing SVG blob. So S, uh, blob now can receive SVG code. You want to take a quick peek at that. I can't remember if we did a bubbling on that. But this is SVG right here, an SVG path command. And we're passing that into the points. So that's directly in the blob. That's probably pretty small for you. That's directly in the blob, the points. So you can do that or use an SVG container, but that was one of the things. I also need to update, it looks like. I have to run an update on the resize on my pattern in the backing background there. Uh, well, I'll go in and fix that up later. Patterns as well. Just recently, patterns have been updated to work with Retina properly. I wonder if, I don't think that's a problem with it here, but it actually could be. Um, how do we get out of here? <laughs> Goodbye, that one. Uh, following a path, path we dragging along the path, we redid that. So it was it was launched, and then we redid that, and look how how nice that is. We our way of doing it was not an sort of an official equation way. It was slightly makeshift, and and we'd be running into problems. Whereas I go over here, go <laughs> and whip on over there. But um, we saw somebody make a, with paper and got the code. And now we can follow the path with an equation, which is, which is very nice. So thank you. And there's a message in here to the person who initially did this. We've recreated it here in Zim and made sure that we matched it as nicely. And then a game for uh, playing a little game and dancing aliens with parallax. Don't forget parallax. We haven't worked on it in a while, but a lot of people use it. Here's free. So now I've turned this one on. So it's following my mouse here. We can make it dance. So there's that one dancing. We can look off to the right, look off to the left. Oh, no was, I'm not sure. Oh, no is saying no. <laughs> yes is saying yes. And then we can uh, adjust this other one too. So a little stick aliens running with parallax. This fellow called Frank Loss has been doing a lot of work in cute little parallax banners and stuff like that. So that's great. All right. So that is a look at that stuff. And uh, we've been um, bubbling along here. But one of the things uh, more specifically in 10.4.0 is this one here, the checkboxes in the list. So shall we show you a bit of the checkbox code? We'll reduce this, and that's the traverse code. So the two the two things in 10.4 is traverse and, and the checkbox. Here's the checkbox code. We're coming on down. We have a list. A bit bigger for you. A list, and we're passing in breakfast, lunch, dinner, blah, blah, blah. And we say checkbox true. So now that turns it into a, a list with checkboxes. Uh, function summary when when it changes so when we've changed the checkbox it calls summary and summary is making uh, a summary of items so we're looping through the lists checkboxes each time so now the list has a check boxes property that gives us an array of all the checkboxes in the list each time we get the checkbox and if that checkbox is checked we're pushing that in, we're pushing the text of the checkbox into this array called checked. This is one way of doing it. We could have uh, uh, used concatenation on a string, but then you end up with a, this a comma at the end and you have to splice that off or whatever you're doing that off using a substra, substring. So a nice way to create a string list is just throw it into an array and then once you're all done, join that array with the comma space, and that's making that array down below. But anyway, what we're looking at is uh, accessing the checkbox stuff there. Anything else of interest? Um, 
we can style that, by the way, we can style the checkboxes, uh, various sizes if we want, by applying style. And that would apply styles on all of it. New label of checked items. Uh, what is this one doing? Well, that's where we were throwing that list of checked items. Ah, uh, list checks equals true. This list, take your list and say set checks true, and all of all of the checkboxes will be true. And list set checks, set check at some index, true will set it to true. So for instance, let's turn all of the checks on and then set the second one to false. And then we're running the summary so that it updates the words there. And we'll view this in a browser, open in a browser. So now all of the checkboxes are on and dinner is the only one that's not checked. And there it is getting the information from it. So now that I check that one, they're all checked. All right, so you have some, you could set a little button up here saying check all or something. It'd be very easy to do or uncheck all, you've seen those things before. So that's cool. Uh, note that as well, we have, it may, you may or may not want to do this. When we select it, it turns a color, and this one also turns a color. So each one turns a uh, color. That's called the selected background color. You don't need to set that. You could just use the checkbox itself for uh, showing people that it's checked and that's up to you. You can also, you see how there's a rollover color there, you can have a selected background, roll background color as well and a color of, of that. So you can do everything that you could, can in a list because it is a list. All right, so that's that one. And the other one that we were taking a look at was the traverse here. We'll open that up in a browser. So this is a blob, and we're traversing from one point to another. And thanks, KV, for the work on that. There we go. Whee! What do you think? Cool, huh? So um, back over here, we've got the code for that. Traverse. There's our blob. Once again, we're in 10.4, and we got that. If you haven't worked with blobs before, I didn't code all that stuff. That came from Pizzazz 4, which can be found in the Neo site. You want to see that quickly. Go back to the 10 site here. Zim Neo, easiest way now. Neo is 9, so that's what we used to have Zim 9. But if you go into examples here, there's the Neo site right there. Neo. And then you have to wait for it. <laughs> Change that. Now that I'm using that quite a lot to get to Pizzazz 4, here's Pizzazz 4, and there's where I got the code from, that menu right there. You just come on in here, copy that, and you've got a blob that looks like that. Anytime you want, by the way, you're welcome to message us on Slack, and if you've got a cool blob shape, you're welcome to mes message us on there, and we'll, we'll add it. Same with this menu. <laughs> So, hey, thanks, Andy, for making this wild squiggle. <laughs> squiggle there. So you can come on in there and help help us out, help others out as well. I can't seem to see it. Do we have to do a desktop reveal? No, there we are. Here's my code. So that's the blob. We've made that a bit bigger by transforming the points bigger. And then we set the current point of zero. We located the circle on the blob. Um, at the same place as the blobs uh, first, or if this is zero, this is point controls at zero means the first, the blob's first point. So, sorry, I, I, I know it kind of looks a little bit messy, doesn't it? But it is pretty cool if you think about it. We're making a new circle that's purple. We're locating it at the blob's first point. That's what that is. Or any other point. So we've located at the fourth point, etc. And then when we press on the stage, we are making the next point B plus 1, and we're traversing. So blob.traverse, we're saying move that circle from the current point, 0, to the next point, which is 1. And Oh, I forgot to do that time. Yeah, I was going to take a look at that. That is the time it takes to animate across the whole squiggle. Oh, uh, I probably could quickly adjust that. I'm not sure I will. I sort of like that. It means any traversing, you're sort of working with the same overall time, and it 
it, it will go the same speed. Uh, we possibly could divide, we could m provide you like a, say, I, I only want to go through two seconds from this point to that point. And then the next point, I want to go three seconds or five seconds or something. We could take that number and then oh, whatever, multiply it by the total time divided by this segment time or something. Anyway, uh, <laughs> then it works into segment ratios and stuff like that. This way you sort of can just keep the same time and that's an overall time it would take to traverse the whole blob or squiggle. And then it's going to divide that up into uh, what it thinks it needs to. I'll leave it like that for now. So there we are traversing and then after we've traversed, we're sort of moving the next point or the current point to the next point sort of thing. All right, there is a traversed event. So when we, uh, when we have traversed, there we are. Uh, that traversed event will give you an event object that has an OBJ property that says uh, that it's the circle that is traversing. So the blob is the thing that gets the event e.target would be the blob or e.current target would be the blob but e.obj is the object that is traversing so or we could have just said circle.animate there so circle.animate and here we are animating the color to red in this amount of time rewind and looping twice so that little animation each time that traverse ends and there's every time we stage down what are we doing reassign down event Oh, uh, we're running the down event, the stage down event, just once right there. That means once so that we can't, if we didn't do that, we could keep on clicking and it would keep on resetting the animation. It just looks a bit silly. So we're waiting until the circle has gone to the next point before we let people press down again. And there we are. This is now finished. We've traversed. So bring the stage mouse down again. All right, there we go. That is a summary of what's been bubbling here at zimjs.com. I'm inventor Dan Zen. Come on into the Zim Slack at zimjs.com slash Slack, and uh, you can talk about any of this stuff or try things out. We'd love to see you there. All the best. Have a great day. Ciao.